A very good morning uh, to all uh, dear brothers in Christ. Uh, we thank our uh, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, for giving this wonderful opportunity to discuss about his wonderful words of life. Uh, so last uh, few weeks, uh, we've been seeing uh, the subject about uh, soul and uh, we saw clearly from the scriptures that uh, how uh, man is a soul and a man doesn't have a soul inside. When a man dies, his soul also dies. So after death, uh, there is nothing until the resurrection happens. And when will the resurrection happen? We have seen from the scripture that uh, it is going to happen only in a thousand years when the Jesus is going to return to the second coming. He is going to rule on this earth for a period of thousand years. Sir. So the next question that naturally comes to our mind is that then what is the meaning of hell? So today <clears throat> we are going to have a free tour to hell and go visit hell and come and see what does the Bible say about hell. So <clears throat> generally uh, hell means, uh, you see, a uh, place of fire, a lake of fire where all the wicked, uh, all the people who don't accept Jesus Christ are thrown into this lake of fire and they are tortured day and night uh, and uh, they are burnt uh, in this uh, hell fire. So, uh, not only hell, uh, you see, uh, fire is there. In this uh, hell, uh, there is a lot of worms also which die not. Uh, it will keep on crawling upon them and it will consume them uh, uh, totally. And uh, in this hell, there are various uh, types of, uh, you see, torment that will be given to the wicked. Uh, you see, based on their sin, they will be put to deep uh, boiling and uh, some people will be put to hot water, you see, hot, very, very hot water and will dipped and uh, taken out. Uh, and uh, even uh, some people will be put to deep oil, you see, and fried, uh, uh, you see. Uh, and uh, even if they are uh, uh, asking for forgiveness, uh, they won't be, uh, you see, uh, given freedom or uh, given forgiveness. Uh, and uh, if they are sinned with their eyes, their eyes will be plucked out. If they are sinned with their uh, you see, mouth, uh, their tongues and the teeth will be plucked out. Uh, and uh, so much of torment will be there that uh, some people's skin will be peeled and uh, they will be made to work a hard labor. You see, they will be you see, given to uh, poisonous uh, serpents and scorpions uh, and various other things. Uh, and this is the concept of uh, hell. Uh, you see, and Jesus keeps on uh, uh, coming to hell uh, now and then and visits everybody and sees the welfare, uh, how the you see, work is going on in hell. And the sinners, seeing Jesus, they cry for forgiveness of sins, but Jesus uh, carelessly and uh, without even bothering them and tells, no, my son, you had a good time, now you have a bad time, so I can't do anything, so no opportunity will be given to you and Jesus just walks off. And uh, just think uh, this is totally against uh, the character of our uh, Lord uh, that he doesn't care anybody and just walks off. Uh, and who is the in charge of this hell? Uh, you see, you see the Satan, the devil himself, uh, he is the in charge of this hell. Uh, so the Satan's responsibility is that he go daily outside and bring all the souls to, you see, hell, all the wicked souls to hell. Therefore, uh, the people believe that uh, as soon as a man dies, uh, the judgment happens uh, based on their sin and based on the good deeds. If their, uh, you see, uh, sin is more than the good deeds, uh, they will go to hell and they burn in a hellfire and they will be tormented forever and ever. But if they are done, uh, you see, good deeds, uh, uh, they will go to heaven and uh, they will be in uh, heaven, the paradise. So, <clears throat> judgment uh, happens uh, and the uh, uh, book of life will be opened up. So the good people will be sent to heaven, the bad people will be sent to hell. So this is the general idea and uh, Satan has to give account to God daily when all the angels give account to God. You see, that how many people I come to hell and what all happened, so what all things are updated in hell, so how many people are tormented, how many souls have come. So this is uh, the information that uh, has to be given to God uh, uh, daily, you see. Why? Uh, is there any scriptures uh, that uh, tells that uh, Satan comes before God? You see? Yes. There is a scripture in book of Job where it says, when all the angels came, you see, to present themselves before God, then the Satan also came. Read Job first chapter 6 and 7. Uh, can somebody read? Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? 
Then he said and answered the, uh, the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from will walking up and down in it. Uh, very good, Buddha. So here it says, when all the sons of God came to present themselves before God, that is the time that uh, the devil also came and God asked uh, him, uh, where are you coming? He says, from going fro to and fro to the earth. You see, going up and down, uh, you see, uh, the earth uh, and hell bringing all the souls. So based on this one only, the people, uh, you see, believe that uh, the souls are captured by Satan, are taken by devil to hell and torture. But just think, if devil, uh, uh, Satan, is taking all the sinners to be tormented in hell, who is the greatest of all the sinners? It is, it is none other than Satan himself, none other than the fallen angels. If that is the case, then instead of uh, Satan tormenting others, actually he is the one that has to be tormented and put to hell in hellfire and burned forever and ever. But uh, this is the reverse. Satan is bringing everybody and tormenting and under the supervision of God. Just think, imagine, brother, a man, how much can he sin that he is tormented forever and ever, ever and ever, eternity to eternity, without even giving an opportunity to repent or just uh, no forgiveness of sins at all? Let us imagine, you see, that a man, uh, uh, you see, from birth to death, uh, you see, how much can he sin? Let us calculate and see. Let us assume that a man can live for 100 years. That's more than our exaggeration. Say man never lives for 100 years. But let us think that each and every man ever born on this earth has lived for 100 years. So, in one day, there are 24 hours. In uh, 24 hours, 8 hours we need to sleep, 8 hours we need to work, and 8 hours, let us say, in the balance 8 hours we sin. Each and every man can sin continuously for 8 hours. That means 34% of his life is entire dedicated for only for sin. Okay? That means if a man lives for 100 years, and 34% means 34 years he continuously sin. For 34 years of sin, what is the quantum of punishment that God actually has to be given him? If you see, it is 34 years, not more than that one. But we see that they are tormented in hell forever and ever and no freedom and no liberty. You see, no escape at all. How is this possible to Uttarayana? You see, just think, uh, you see, many years before, there was a very tragic uh, incident that happened in India. I, am, I hope that in your place also a lot of things has happened. See, Sabarmati Express, uh, you see, in Godra station was burnt. A coach was full of human beings, they were burnt alive with petrol. You see, they, they screamed, they screamed, they screamed, uh, you see, uh, because of the fire. Within a fraction of a moment, the fire spread all over the place. You see, all over the place, sir. And uh, the coach got so much heated that every iron was so hot. Uh, and the people uh, began to try to escape from this fire. They began to hide behind uh, the doors, go inside the toilet, uh, you see, and get uh, down the seat. Wherever they went, uh, everything was metal, metal, metal. It was completely hot. Uh. Dear brother, you see, you know what happened? Huh? You know, automatically everybody was charged to death. You see, we can't see that condition at all. You see, the half burnt bodies of so many people crying, screaming. You see, the people who saw this one were in tears. And after this one, there was a school in Tamil Nadu. You see, the small children were eating the food. The entire roof collapsed. You see, and fire caught up. They were all, you see, half burnt. They were alive. They were screaming in hospitals. Amma, yo, please help. Oh, daddy, help. Doctor, please help. But uh, there is nothing that could be done, dear brother. You see, except give some medicines. But it was beyond relief. Seeing their screaming, seeing their pain. You see, everybody, even the when we were non-relative to them, they were in completely tears. Imagine the great, uh, you see, dictator Hitler. He killed 60 like Jews, systematically slaughtered them. You see, and uh, Saddam Hussein, 
It destroyed so many, you see, villages and burnt the people alive, buried them alive. You see, dear brother Anna, uh, dear brothers and sisters, uh, when we listen, uh, when we see all these things, uh, what thought comes to our mind? Uh, do we really feel happy by such incidents happening in the world, people burning and dying? Really, but then uh, we don't feel happy, though they are not unbelievers, though they are not in the truth, uh, though they don't believe in Jesus, we never feel happy that, oh, because the unbelievers, all these things are happening. It really pains our heart uh, because they are humankind. If we, are, we ourselves have so much of pity, how did Jesus, how come Jesus, who goes to the hell and just walks off like that only, without even giving mercy for a sinner who pleads, you see, who requests for forgiveness. Dear brethren, this is totally contradict, contradict to character of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we have seen many gods in this world. So you see, they are not less than uh, ferocious, uh, you see, ones uh, having uh, so much of anger, so much of wrath, uh, and they want to completely annihilate the wicked. But you have the God of Bible and the Lord Jesus are totally different. You have the Imagine if uh, a dog bites us, what we will do? We will just uh, hit them two, three beatings, that's all. We won't take the dog and uh, pull it out and pull out the tongues, uh, pull out the teeth uh, and uh, pluck out its skin and uh, chop it off uh, and slowly pluck out the hairs, uh, pluck out the eyes uh, and dip it into hot water or boil it into water and uh, torture it. Uh, you see, how much uh, we will uh, you see, uh, hit it uh, until we are satisfied. Uh, not not behind that one, dear brother. Imagine if, uh, you see, uh, a technician comes to your house and to repair your system and your system has gone bad and it gets more much more worse. So what will you do with the technician? You should, will you hang him? Hang him to death uh, until he pleads for uh, forgiveness? No, dear brethren. Uh, then how come the God of the Bible says that all the wicked shall be turned to hell? Uh, you see? So, uh, what does the Bible say? You see? See, God uh, has punished so many wicked in the Bible. A lot of examples are there, you see. And uh, we see that uh, the sons of Aaron who offered a very uh, different, uh, uh, you see, uh, fire to God, they were consumed. What happened to them? Let us read from the Bible. Numbers 16.33, Buddha. Can you read Numbers 16.33, Buddha? Peter, I believe Peter could also read. Peter, would you ah. like to read? Hmm. They and all that appertain to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. See, the Bible says the earth, you see, huh, was open. They went alive into the pit. And what happened? The earth closed. They perished. They perished from the congregation. You see, it doesn't say that uh, they went alive and they were in uh, the pit alive. They were tormented alive. No. It says they were perished. That means they were completely destroyed. You see, the worst of the worst case uh, is uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, the worst of all the sinners in the Bible. You see, what did God do for it? Uh, the Bible says... Uh, that uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed with fire. They were never kept alive, dear brethren. They were not uh, tormented and roasted in slow fire, you see. And uh, that was happening forever and ever. No, within a fraction of a minute, you see. What happened? Uh, they were all consumed. They were all turned to ashes. They were all turned to salt. Even Lord's wife was turned. She also became a... Pillar of salt, uh, isn't it, dear brother? We all know this very well. We never see that the wicked are uh, tormented slowly. See, once what happened, the disciples uh, went for a village to ask for food. Uh, but the people did not uh, welcome them. They were rejected. Uh, they were so angry that they came to Jesus and said, Lord, give us the permission. Uh, like uh, uh, Elia, we will bring down fire from heaven and destroy them. You see? What was the thing that Jesus uh, replied, you know? 
to our surprise jesus replied a, a very strange thing let us read what jesus said luke 9 chapter 54 and 55 brother luke 9 chapter 54 and 55 brother <laughs> and when his disciples uh, james and john saw this they said lord will do that we commanded that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them and even as Elias did. But he turned and rebuked them and said, You know not what method and what manner of spirit you are of. You see, he rebuked the disciples saying, You don't know what manner of spirit you are. Son of man came to save the life, not to destroy the man's life. Jesus himself rebuked the apostles you see, when they were not offered food, the wicked people, they turned away the apostles. To them, Jesus showed pity. He rebuked the disciples saying, what you are doing and what you are telling is wrong. Dear brethren, if Jesus had the thought of punishing all the wicked, this would have been the exact situation when the disciples came and said, Lord, give us the permission to disturb them fire. Jesus would have clearly said, oh, correct, what spirit yours? You, you really understood the will of God. Please destroy them. Anyway, I'm also destroying them in hell. I'm going to burn them in hell. You please burn them here first. Then later, I'll burn them in hell. Jesus never said that on the brand, but he rebuked, saying, you know not what type of spirit you are. Son of man came to save the lives of man, not to destroy the man's life. Therefore, dear brethren, what is the meaning of hell in the Bible? You see, the word hell in the Bible actually, you see, is uh, totally changed than what we believe. It actually originally means to hide or to cover. That is the original meaning of the word hell in the Bible. But today, the words uh, has got uh, me various meanings. The, the various uh, words in this world the meaning has changed nowadays. Like for example, what is this one if you say? This is a window. But what is this one? This is windows. Isn't it? So both are windows. See, but the application is different. Isn't it? And what is this one, brother? Can anybody reply? What is this one? What wow. is this one? A mouse. Very good. Now what is this one? This is also a mouse. You see? But the application has changed. The meaning has changed. Now, what is this one? Same. Tablet. Uh, correct. Tablet. Uh? But what is this one? This is also a tablet. Uh? But uh, the meaning has changed. Everything. So, similarly, when originally the word hell was used, it was used to hide something. Like uh, if you have a, you see, a very old dictionary, 15th century dictionary, you can see there. In Cambridge Dictionary, it says huh, that I must go to bury my potatoes. That word is correctly put as I must go to hell my potatoes. Hell means what? To bury it. Or, do you see? To underneath uh, completely bury inside the ground. Uh, see, this is a screenshot of the 15th century Cambridge Dictionary. This is a very 15th century old uh, original Bible, original dictionary. I have it in my house. You see, the meaning of hell is given there. See? Clearly says hell huh? means uh, to hide. That is the original meaning of the word hell. Okay, now let us see uh, about this word hell in the Bible. See, the word hell in the Bible comes totally 54 times. You see, uh, in the Old Testament, it comes 31 times. New Testament, it comes 23 times. So, there are actually four words that are used to translate the word hell. In Old Testament, there is only one word that is used and that word is uh, Sheol. In the New Testament, there are three words that are used that has uh, 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 three words uh, are called as uh, uh, Hades, uh, Gehenna and uh, Tartaro. Uh, one minute, please. Just a moment. Okay, there are uh, 
these are the four words that are used to, for the word hell in the Bible. The New Testament has three words and the Old Testament has one word. Sir. So what we'll do is that we will see how these verses are applied in the Bible. First of all, let us see the Old Testament. The Old Testament uh, word for hell is Sheol. And that is from the uh, Strong's Concordance number H7585. And uh, this Sheol in the Bible comes 63 times. And this one is translated how many ways if you see it is translated in three different ways. Grave, hell and pit. Okay. So uh, can somebody read the comment which is there in the box? Ashish Pada, can you do it? Can you read the meaning of word shell? Okay. Shell from H7592 Hades or the world of the dead as if a subterranean retreat including his accessories and inmates grave, hell, pit. Correct, brother. Thank you. So, you see, it says uh, uh, the word of the dead. See, the original meaning of the word uh, Sheol, you see, which is equivalent to the New Testament Hades, it says it is the world of the dead. And how it is translated? Uh, it is translated as grave, it is translated as hell, it is translated as pit also. And how the translation they have done, if you see, whenever the verse speaks about a good people, in that context, they have put a grave. Whenever it speaks about the wicked people, they have put the word hell. You see, this is how they have done the translation. Why? Because the translators who were translated had their mind fixed that the hell is a place of torment. So when a Bible speaks about a good person, they could never allow a good person to go to hell. Like for example, you see, uh, the Bible says uh, that uh, Jacob went to hell. He desired to went to hell. You see, uh, let us read Genesis 37-35. Genesis 37-35. Can uh, uh, Peter brother, can you read? Okay, 36, 35. 37, 37 chapter, verse 35. 37, 35, okay. Hmm. And all his sons and all his daughters arose to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted. And he said, For I shall go down into the grave to my son in, in mourning. Thus his father wept for him. See, the word grave, you can see in the screen, that is from the root word, Sheol. You see? They have translated the word Sheol as grave in this place. Right? Uh, let us read it in Nepali Bible. Can somebody read in Nepali Bible, brother? Inka sabai chora chori haru le tin lai santona dine prayat na gare tar tin lai santi bhaye na tin le bhane aha yo mero shok ma nai ma mero chora ka ha chihan ma jane chu esari esof ka bua le tin ko nimti milauna gare Ah, jihan. Correct, ha? Yes, jihan. Ah, oh, jihan. Jihan. Jihan, okay. Jihan means what? Yeah, Jihan. Okay. Jihan means what? Grave. Grave, very good. See? Grave, they are translated. Now, why? Because Jacob, Jacob is a patriarch, Israel. How can he go to hell? That is the reason when Hades, that word came here, for good persons, they were translated as, you see, grave. Now, let us read about the Bad person, I'm the wicked person. Psalms 9, chapter 17, verse brother. Psalms 9, 17, brother. Psalm 9, 17. Hmm. The wicked shall be turned into hell 
and all the nations that forget God. Mm, you see, the wicked shall be turned to hell because he is directly speaking about the wicked. So they all expect the wicked go to hell and burn in fire. That is the reason the same Hebrew word shul. How is it translated? You see, see from the screen. It is the same Hebrew word. H seven five eight five. It is translated hell. Now let us read in Nepali Bible, brother. Brother, read in Nepali Bible, brother. Dushta arutai patal mai forgera dani chun sabi jati haru justly permission lai bhushan chun. Ha, patal, isn't it? Ha, what is the meaning of patal in Nepali? Hell. Patal means hell. Okay, good, good. See how they have translated. When he speaks about wicked people, the same word is translated as hell. Now, why could they don't translate it as graveyard? They could have done, done that one, no? But they are already fixed uh, that the wicked should go to hell. That means a place of torment. That is the reason they have translated this one. Okay? Let us read one more verse in book of Job. Job 17 chapter 13 to 16 verse. Job 17, chapter 13 and 16, brother. Okay. But now I come to you and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. No, 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 no. Job 17, chapter 13th verse first and 16th verse next. Yes, sorry, job. Thirteenth, if I wait, the grave is my house. I have made my bed in the darkness. Ah, see, if I wait, grave is my house. Grave, you see, because uh, uh, Job is a good person, huh? a ancient worthy, faithful warrior. So how can he go to a uh, uh, hell, a torment place? Uh, so they were here, they were translated as, you see, grave. Now read in Nepali, brother. 1713. Ayub. 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 Yeah, Okay. Thank you. So here also Jhan. Correct now the same word grave. Nah, it has come. Now let us read verse 16, brother. Read in English, then in Nepali. Verse 16. Will they go down to the gates of Sio? Shall we have rest together in the dust? Ah, see, you have the word Sio. In your Bible, they put the word Hebrew word only. Aha. Uh -huh. Why they use the Hebrew word? Why they use, did not use the English word? They put Sio. No? Which is the translation you're using, brother? Which is the translation? Is it NIV, Peter Buther? Yes. Ah, NIV. Now read in KGV. KGV. You have KGV with you? <laughs> Sorry, I don't. Okay, Ashish Buther will read you. Ah. They shall go down to the bars of the pit when our rest together is in the dust. See, pit. See, that word sure in KGV, they have translated as pit. In NIV, they have Correctly put the exact Hebrew word. Shiol. Now read in Nepali. Huh? Okay, Nepali. Job 
Nepali Bible, brother. 1716, okay. You, you're searching from that uh, mobile or you have the Bible with you? Yeah, I'm searching more. K you meet to go to Kama Danza K. I miss Sangay Duloma Monito. Mirtuko Dokama, that uh, it is written as Mirtuko Dokama. Uh, let me read the translation I have. Tinia Tolo, Odulok, Odulok Agla or Ka, or Lenison, Java, I mean, Exa Duloma, Bisram Lineso, Odulok. Okay, so they are put Adolok in your Bible. Yes. Other Bible, other Nepali Bible, what they put? Mirtuko Dokama. Ah, Mirtuko Dokama. See? That means what? See, various uh, ways they have translated. Why they have translated the same uh, Hebrew word in different ways? If it is a place of torment, they could have translated all the places as a place of torment, no? As hell. You see? But why they have not translated? You see? Because the original root meaning of sure is not a place of torment at all. You see? What all verses we have read now? Even if you translate as hell, fire, hell, fire in all the places, that would never give the correct meaning in the Bible at all. Therefore, we need to study by comparing the verses. See, we'll revise what we have studied. Genesis 37, 35, Psalms 9, 17, Job 17, 13 and 16. We saw that all these are from the same Hebrew word Sheol, but translated different ways. For the good people, it is said as grave. For wicked people, it is put as hell. But again, for the good people, it is said as grave or pit. You see? Why? Because the brethren, the translators have uh, the mind fixed that a wicked uh, shall go into torment. But actually, you know, what is the meaning of hell in the Bible? It is actually grave. See, in your uh, uh, Bible, Patal, the word Patal comes brother. Is it there in your Nepali Bible? We read it now just now. Patal. Yes. You see? Uh, what is the meaning of Patal? You see? Patal means what? That is a uh, almost like a Sanskrit word you can say. Pa plus tal. That means what? Pa means foot. Tal means what? Place. You see? Pa tal means a place which is below your feet. Now, which is the place which is below your feet? It is the ground. So, that is the actual meaning of hell in the Bible. See, now let us come to the New Testament. In the New Testament, there are three Greek words that are used. Hades, Gehenna and Tartaro. Hades comes 11 times. Gehenna comes 12 times. Tartaro comes only one time in the Bible. And this uh, Hades is, uh, you see, uh, the same word uh, as Shihol. Okay? Now, uh, this 11 times, uh, you see, it comes in the New Testament. It is the same meaning. You can read in the box. Uh, can somebody read, brother? Ashish, brother, can you read? Okay. Hades, it's from G1 as a negative particle in G1492. Properly on scene, that is Hades or the place state of departed souls grave hell see what is the meaning of it is it is a grave it is a hell it is grave the hades means hell the same old testament word she all is new testament it is both are one and the same you see now let us see how you see the similarity comes in the old testament and new testament Old Testament Shul is New Testament Hades. Okay. Let us read Acts 2.27, brother. Please read, brother, Acts 2.27 in uh, uh, English. <coughs> because thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thin holy one. To see corruption. Uh, see, Acts 2.27 says, Jesus will not be left in hell. You see? So his soul was not left in hell. Neither suffer the holy ones to see corruption. So that uh, word here is from Hades. Okay? It's here it translates as hell. Now read in Nepali, brother. 
किनकि तपाईले मेरो प्राणलाई पातालमा छोड्नु हुने छैन न त तपाईले मेरो पवित्र जनको शरीर कुहुन दिनु हुने छ अ पाताल करेक्ट अ सी द वर्ड केम इज पाताल दैट इज अ हेल अ नो रीड डिड यू रीड एनएवी ब्रदर यस ओके दिस वर्स एक्स 227 is from the actually old testament old testament it is given in psalm 1610 read psalm 1610 brother please psalm 1610 please read kin uh, for you will not leave my soul in seol not uh-huh. you will uh, not nor will you allow your holy one to see corruption see, the seol the word is used there You see, they are not translated as hell, but you should have used the original root word, Sheol. Now read in Nepali, brother. Huh? Ah. 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 actually both are one and the same okay that is the way we should read the bible we should compare the bible you see here a little there a little search the scriptures see beautifully <coughs> huh? it is clearly given see jihan means what grave grave means what patal patal means what huh? a place of the dead you see where dead bodies are buried huh? that is the meaning let us read one more verse in matthew 16 18 brother Matthew sixteen eighteen brother. Okay. Sixteen. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and get, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. The gate of Hades. Ah, it is see German. correct now see what i am telling is the greek word the same greek word is printed in your bible any bible aha uh-huh. now read the same verse in nepali but let us see what they put mo timi holai bhandachu ki timi patru chau mo mero mandali e satan mathi sabit garne chu ra narak ka dhoka haru tes mathi vijay hune chainan ho see they put the naraka correct now why they put naraka Marka means what? A place of torment. You see, the church can't go to torment place. Yes, they put as naraka. This is the same Greek word, no? Huh? It is earlier the same Greek word as translated for Jesus as what? Patal. You see, in Psalms they put as jihan. Why suddenly they put the same word as you see naraka? Because of their false belief. But if you compare the verses. Everything is from the same root word. Now read the same verse in uh, KJV, brother. KJV, brother. Read, brother. May uh, Ashish, brother, read. Okay. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. See, hell, hell, hell. Huh? In Acts two thirty-seven, what did we read? Ah, uh? hell. Jesus was not left in hell. The same hell he slanted as Naraka. Huh? If that is Naraka, then Acts two twenty seven also should be Naraka now. But they did not put Naraka. Why? Because Jesus, how can he go to Naraka? Oh, you, you put it as what? Patal there. So actually everything is one and the same. Patal Naraka. You see, and uh, Jihan. Everything is the same place. That means the grave. Read one more verse, brother. Matthew eleven twenty three, brother. Matthew eleven twenty three. Matthew eleven twenty three. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. Hades. For if the mighty works which uh, which were done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. 
ਤੁਸੀਂ ਇਸ ਚੱਲੀ ਦਾ ਮਰਕੇ ਪਰ ਨਾਮ ਆਓ ਕੈਪਰ ਦਾ ਵਿਜ਼ ਦਾ ਲਿਫਟ ਟੂ ਹੈਵਨ ਦੋ ਸ਼ੁਡ ਬੀ ਬਾਟ ਡਾਊਨ ਟੂ ਹੀਡੀਸ ਇਨ ਐ ਨੇਵੀ ਇਟ ਇਜ਼ ਗਿਵਨ ਹੀਡੀਸ ਇਨ ਕੇਜੀ ਵੀ ਇਟ ਇਜ਼ ਗਿਵਨ ਐਸ ਹੈਲ ਨੋ ਰੀਡ ਇਨ ਐਪਲੀ ਬਦਰ ਏ ਕਰਫਨ ਹੋਮ ਕਰਫਨ ਹੋਮ ਏ ਕਰਫਨ ਹੋਮ ਕੇ ਤੋ ਆਕਾਸ਼ ਸਮੇ ਉਚਾਲੀਨੇ ਸਸਰ ਤੋ ਪਾਤਾਲ ਸਮ ਖਸਾਲੀਨੇ ਸਸ ਕਿਨਾ ਕੀ ਤੋ ਮਾ ਗਰੀਕਾ ਸ਼ਕਤੀਸ਼ਾਲੀ ਕਦਮਰੁ ਸਦਮ ਮਾ ਗਰੀਕਾ ਵੇ ਦੇਖੀ ਕਿਉ ਆਜ ਕੋ ਦਿਨ ਸਮ ਰਹਨ ਥੀ ਰਹਨ ਕਿਉ ਪਾਤਾਲ ਸੇਮ ਈਡੀ ਏਡੀਸ ਵੇ ਪੁਟਸ ਪਾਤਾਲ ਯਾਰ ਹ ਦੇ ਕੋੜਾ ਪੁੱਟ ਵਾਟ ਹ ਨਰਕ ਨਾ ਹੀ ਸ਼ੁਡ ਆ ਪੁਟਿੰਗ ਨਰਕ ਆ ਦੇ ਪੁਟਿੰਗ ਪਾਤਾਲ ਵੇ ਹੈ this is the same word the same code how can you man- manipulate should be the same everywhere no if you putting it as hell put it everywhere hell only but you see dear brethren this is various ways they have used it in the bible okay this is actually speaking about capernaum because capernaum was a wonderful city you see once they rejected christ uh, you see jesus said uh, it will be like sodom and gomorrah today really you can see as in the photo the capernaum is no more uh, you see um a place where uh, a man can live it is completely you see desolate place uh, therefore uh, by all these uh, verses uh, we clearly come to know that uh, you see uh, the bible uh, in the new testament uh, you see when it says uh, uh, sheol uh, in the old testament and the new testament head is uh, both are one and the same it means actually grave so therefore jesus said clearly uh, you know what did he say jesus said all that are in the graves read john 5:28 brother john 5:28 marvel not at this for the hour is in the ways all that are in the graves shall hear his voice very good brother see all that are in the graves read in nav brother you you read in nav Did you read yes, it in NIV now? NIV. Okay, now read it in Nepali. Okay, just a minute. John 5. Here is it written. Ma afai. Sorry. Yes, ma ato ma na mana ki namane samay ai rahe sa. जब जिहान में उन्हें अरु सब इली उसको सो सुनने सन आ जिहान वेर आर एवरीबॉडी व्हाट इज जीसस है एवरीबॉडी दे आर इन जिहान आ दैट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ हेल इन द बाइबल दैट इज द रीजन जीसस क्लियरली सेड ऑल दैट आर इन द ग्रेव्स सो डियर ब्रदरन यू सी सो वी नीड टू स्टडी द बाइबल देयरफॉर व्हाट वी टेक हियर इज नॉट जस्ट अ डिस्कोर्स we just don't speak and go we study you see in depth study you see and now read revelation 20 verse 14 brother revelation chapter 20 verse 14 brother ha huh? 20 14 okay. hmm. Hmm. then death and hades were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death hmm. you see huh what does this verse say death and what brother it is it is uh, we put into lake of fire lake of fire are huh? actually huh? read the same verse in uh, kgv Huh? Brother, can you read with Rashish, brother? And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. You see? Huh? What were cast into hell? Lake of fire. Hell and death. death. Hell and death. Both were cast into lake of fire, Rishim, sir. You see? Huh? You know, uh, what is the meaning of this one? Generally, eh? everybody thinks that in hell, there is lake of fire. but this was says in lake of fire hell was put it seems hell also went into lake of fire it seems now what is the meaning of this one read in nepal brother mrityu ra patal agni kunna ma phaliye yo agni kunna dosro mrityu ho 
What is the meaning of this death, second death? We are going to study detail in the coming class. Okay. Now, what we study is, is we are studying only one word, Hades in the New Testament. Apart from that, there is another word, Gehenna. This word, Gehenna, is from Strong's Concordance number 1067. What is this Gehenna? This word, Gehenna, is translated as hell in the New Testament. This word means actually the value of phenom. Okay, let us read. Uh, let us read in uh, uh, what is the meaning of uh, this Gehenna uh, from the screen. Uh, Ashish brother, can you read from the screen what is the meaning of this Gehenna? Okay. Gehenna of Hebrew origin H1516 and S2011 valley of the son of Hinnom, Gehenna or Gehinnom of Valley of Jerusalem used figuratively as a name for the place or state of everlasting punishment, hell. Uh -huh. You see? What is this Gehenna? It says it is a valley of the son of Hinnom. A valley of Jerusalem. You see? The valley of Jerusalem. is. What is this valley of Jerusalem? You see? This is the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem was a fortress city. And outside the city of Jerusalem, there was a place that is called as Valley of Hinnom. What is this Valley of Hinnom? Why God calls Valley of Hinnom as Gehenna? What actually was happening there? If you see in the Bible, whenever the people of Israel left uh, one true God and worshipped the idols, they used to worship Baal. We have seen this one in a many times in the period of kings in the Bible. They used to worship Baal God. And the Baal God was a huge, you see, a metal statue. It had a, a body of a human being and a head of an animal. And below it, they used to put a lot of wood and heat the metal red hot, it seems. And the, when the metal and the God was red hot, they used to sacrifice the children alive, burn them alive by putting it on the ball's hand, it seems. The idol was so hot, as soon as the child was thrown, immediately the child was burnt alive. This was the human sacrifice that they used to give to please their God. You see, that place is the valley of Enom. You see, we know very well that uh, this was not at all what God liked. This is against God's will. See, let us read the dictionary definition for Gehenna also. Uh, brother, can you read, brother? Ashish, brother, can you read? Okay. Gehenna, the valley of Hino, near Jerusalem, in which the Israelites sacrificed their children to Moloch, and to which at a later time uh, the refuse of the city was conveyed to be slowly uh, burned in New Testament, hell, valley of and you know. Valley of, see, uh, am I telling something new? It is all given in the ancient dictionary, 15th century before only. It is not written by me. You see, it clearly says, valley of Hinnom you know, is a place of where Israel sacrificed to the Baal god, Molech god. You see, that is the place which was later turned to be a refuse place. That means all the garbage of the city was thrown there, it seems. You read, it is given in the Bible only. Jeremiah 7, chapter, verse 30 and 31, brother. Uh, Peter, brother, can you read? Jeremiah 7, chapter 30 and 31. Okay. 7, 30.
For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, say the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house which is called by the name to pollute it. Mm. See, the people of Israel have sinned against God, it seems. Whatever the sin, continue now. Uh. And they have built the high places of Tophet which is in the valley of the son of the Hinnom uh -huh. to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, uh -huh. which I did not command, nor did it come into my heart. Ah, see, brother, what we read in the dictionary is given in the Bible exactly. The place of Topet, the valley of son of Hinnom to burn their sons and daughters in fire. Which I commanded not. God never commanded this one. You underline this word. It says, Neither came it into my heart. When the wicked people were sacrificing the wicked children, that thought itself did not come into God's mind, it seems. If that thought has never entered his mind, while wicked doing for the wicked, do you think that God would have created a hell next to heaven? To torment all the wicked of this world? Then why would God love so much the world that he would give his son? No. This is a doctrine which is not there in the Bible at all. Hell in the Bible is grave. See, this is the valley of Enom. Where the refuse of city was thrown. Read one more verse. Jeremiah 19, brother. 5 and 6, brother. 19, okay. Because they have forsaken me and made this an online place, be because they have born incense in it to other gods whom neither they, their fathers nor the king of Judah have known and have filled this place with the blood of the innocent. Which was your head? Jeremiah 19, 5 and 6. Did you read 5 and 6? And they also built the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings to Baal, which I did not command or speak, nor did it come into my mind. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that this place no more the valley. You know, but the value of flag or... oh, You see, <clears throat> what does he say? Huh? They were burning their uh, sons and daughters in this valley of Inam. God says, this shall no more be called the valley of Inam, but the valley of Topet. You see, and later on, when the Israel people turned to God, this was as a refuse of city. It was like a garbage bin, where you throw all the garbage of the city was thrown in this place. This is the valley of Phenom. Actually, this uh, Kehana is referred to. See, you also probably might be having such a place uh, outside your city where all the garbage is thrown. So if you go there, what we can find? <clears throat> you see, a lot of stink will be there. And uh, if you go inside that uh, garbage, uh, what you can find? Uh, you can find some place, fire will be there. If you lift up the garbage underneath, what you can find? Uh, worms. Correct, no? You, you, wherever you go, you will find worms. You will find fire. You see? Correct, no? So, if you throw something there, what will happen? Uh? That fire will consume that thing. Uh, or else the worms will eat that thing completely. You see? The refuse you throw there, it will be destroyed either by fire or either by the worms. Uh, you see? This is what actually the Bible says. Read Isaiah 66, 24, brother. Isaiah 66, 24, brother. And they shall go forth and took upon the crosses of the men who have transgressed against me. For their worms does not die and their fire is not uh, given. They shall be an abhorrence to all flesh. See? They shall go and see the carcass of this man who thrown in this Gehenna. The worm shall not die. That means what? Till today, even till today. As I told, the worms are alive. The worm will be alive until it consumes the body. 
the fire shall not be quenched. That means what? Fire is still burning today. Wa. And today the Gehenna itself is not there. Garbage is not there. You see? This is a figurative language where it says, once you throw the dead body in the garbage, it will be totally consumed either by worms or the by fire. This is the background of Gehenna. Okay. Now let us come to the New Testament. Term. Because this word comes only in the New Testament. And how many times it comes? If you see, it comes only 12 times. And observe, it comes everywhere in the gospel. You see? Why? This word, uh, Gehenna, doesn't come anywhere else in the uh, in New Testament. It comes only once in the book of James. Or else it comes completely in the gospel. And wherever it comes, the word hell, fire is accompanied. That means along with hell, fire, the word is also accompanied. You see? Now let us read all these 12 verses. So for, for more convenient... Matthew, Mark, Luke, we all know it's a gospel, so everything is repeated. So we will consider only one book. Because most of the verses is given in Mark, we will consider book of Mark. Okay? Now, let us see what the book of Mark tells about this word Gehenna. Okay, brother? The word Hellfire. Mark 9 chapter, 43 to 48, brother. Read, brother, in English. Okay, 43 to 48. Hmm. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life, man, rather than having two hands to go to hell, into the fire that shall never be quenched, where their own does not die and the fire is not quenched. A, and if your food causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame rather than having to feed to be cast into hell. But the fire that shall never be quenched. Where their home does not die and the fire is not quenched. And if your eyes cause, if, uh, causes you to sin, uh, block it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Wow. Where their home hmm. does not die and the hmm. fire is not quenched. Very good. See? <clears throat> rather than go to hell fire. So all this hell fire, the word that comes here, it is from the root word Gehenna. Okay, brother. Now, kindly read uh, the same verse in your Nepali Bible, brother. 43, 44. You read only two verses. Now, 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 you this like Kati Deo, do you could have oil and or a ma falin no bandata uh corndo wire a chivan postnu timnim the ossal ho. Norakma no kira rumotas and no agone in the sa eti timbro ankali timila bada din sabani this like jike of fali deo do you anka wire and orakma fali no bandata ek anka boy a pomish could a gem of postnu timin the ossal ho narakta narakmata no kira mortasana Okay, good. Now, see, these are all from the root word Greek uh, 1067 Gehenna. Now, read what is given in uh, the definition brother, here in the screen. We read now. Ashish brother, you can read it again. Gehenna, what does it mean? You see, it says now here uh, of the Hebrew virgin, valley of Son of Hinnom. You see, the valley of Jerusalem used uh, as a name or a place of state uh, for everlasting punishment hell. Jesus was referring to this Gehenna only. What is Jesus saying here? You see, he says, if your hand offend you, better cut off one of your hand. You see, you will better lose one your hand than going to hellfire with both the hands. Correct? Huh? So if our hand sins, what we should do with her? We should cut off our hand. You see? That's what Jesus says. If your hand sins, cut off your hand. 
rather than going with two hands into hellfire. <clears throat> okay. Now, did none of the apostles sin? Yes, they all sinned. You see, then did they cut off their hands? Like for example, you see, when Jesus was arrested, Peter immediately took the sword and chopped off the ears of Malchus, the soldier. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, Peter, put the sword into the shteta. The cup which my father has given me, shall I not drink it? Correct, no? He said that one. But uh, Jesus actually should have said, Peter, you're doing wrong. You sinned with your hand. Please take the sword and cut off your other hand. Did he tell that one? Did he tell that one, brother? No. No. That means what Jesus was saying here is not a little statement at all. Imagine if he cut off one of our hand, will other hand keep quiet? No. It will sin. Then if you cut off that one also? Huh? <laughs> then next what Jesus says, if thy foot huh? <coughs> sin, cut off your foot rather than go with the two foot to hellfire. Okay. Imagine we have cut off two hands. One of the leg is cut. Now will the other leg keep quiet? It will sin. If we cut off that leg also, you see? Correct. No. <coughs> Verse 47. Jesus says, if your eyes sins, pluck out your eyes. Okay. <clears throat> we will pluck out our eyes, one eyes. If our one eyes is gone, will the other eyes keep quiet? No. That might also sin. <clears throat> then if you keep on plucking everything, what is left over that we can serve the Lord? <clears throat> You see, nothing is there in the body at all. So what can we serve the Lord? This is not a literal statement. This itself proves that it is not a literal statement. And what is the meaning of hands? Hands means our friends, our relatives, our associates. You see, a very close person to us. It might be even our pastor also. <clears throat> it might be anybody. You see, even our father, mother also. If they are diverting us from, away from the truth, away from the Bible, is better to cut them off than to have them in fellowship and to move away from God. That is what Jesus is saying. Then, leg means what? The places we visit. You see, spending time in club, disco, marriage, functions. You see, birthday party, malls, shopping. Simply living a lavish lifestyle. If it is disturbing you, if it is moving away from God, better cut it off than to have all these things and be punished of God. Eyes. Eyes means what? The things which we see. <clears throat> movies, cinema, theater, magazine, serial, Facebook, YouTube. If it's all these things are diverting you from God, better cut off all these things. That is what Jesus is saying. Then going to hellfire. You see, Jesus was actually they are referring to Gehenna. Gehenna means what? We just know, sir. Whenever a dead body was put there, it was uh, completely destroyed. You see, either the worms would destroy it or the fire. The same way Jesus is saying, <clears throat> if you repent, good. If you don't repent, what will happen? You will be, you see, going to Gehenna. That means eternal destruction until you are consumed, until you are totally destroyed. You see, he won't be left at all. So what will destroy it? You see, Jesus said, the fur, the worm, the worms die not, and the fire quench not. The, what is the meaning of uh, worms die not? And uh, you see, fire quench not. Uh, this is not literal uh, fire. It will be burning forever and ever, eternity to eternity. No, that fire will be there. Only in the uh, <coughs> items are there for it to consume. Like for example, imagine this building is burning. Nobody can quench it. It's so tall. Do you think that the building will be keeping on burning for 1,000 years? 5,000, 10,000 years? No. Till when it will burn? Until there is something to consume, it will burn. Or else it will get destroyed. Automatically it will get off. Similarly, the worms. Until something is there for it to eat, it will leave. Or else even the worms also will die. That is what Jesus was saying. If you don't repent, you will be totally destroyed. So this was speaking about eternal destruction. That is called a second death in the Bible. 
<clears throat> therefore we see now in revelation he says uh, this is uh, you see uh, death and hell was cast into lake of fire lake of fire means what the second death so what is the second death we will read about this one in the coming days okay now this is the word gehenna the other word and last word is uh, uh, the greek word tartaro this comes only once in the bible okay and that is not referring to human beings at all this is referring to the angels now where is it given second peter 2 4 brother <clears throat> read brother second peter 2 4 2 4 okay for if god did not spare the angels who sin but cast them down to hell and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment ah see when god spared not the angels speaking about the angels but they were cast down to hell <clears throat> you see this word is some greek word 5020 that is tartaro it comes only once in the bible is speaking about the angels so where are the angels you see, we have studied about this one in the three world class. In the first world, angels were given the permission to uh, manifest from spiritual body to, you see, fleshly body and to demanifest uh, and again return to the spiritual body. But uh, during those times, what happened? Uh, when they came in the flesh, they sinned by marrying with women. This was against the will of God. So God uh, destroyed them in the flood. The first world was totally destroyed. All the giants were destroyed. But what happened to those uh, fallen angels, if you see, they had the power to change from spiritual body to human body. Once the flood came, they were all in the human body. They changed to spiritual body. See, now where are they? They are bound in earth atmosphere. <clears throat> they are bound in earth's atmosphere. Read Ephesians 2.2, 2, brother. <clears throat> Ephesians 2 2. Okay. <clears throat> In which you once walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air mm. and the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Ah, you see, the prince of the power of the air. So Satan is ruling from the earth atmosphere. That is compared to hell because he is neither allowed to go to heaven nor come to earth <clears throat> as he was in the first world. So he is bound there. Therefore, <clears throat> this is the meaning of uh, the word hell in uh, various ways it has been used. The Bible clearly says the wicked shall be destroyed. Not that wicked shall be preserved. When they offered the children to the god Molech, that one only God did not like it. He said, that never came into my heart. <clears throat> Jeremiah 7, 30 and 31, we read. So, if they are offering their children as a, a <clears throat> human sacrifice, burn it, God did not like means, do you think God would make a hell next to heaven and torment everybody? Uh, to for eternity? No, the Bible doesn't say so at all. The Bible says, the wicked shall be destroyed. Read Psalms 145, <clears throat> 20 with her. Psalms 145, 20. Okay. <clears throat> the Lord preserved all who love him, but all the weak Wicked, he will destroy. All the wicked, he will destroy. All the wicked, he will destroy, destroy. not preserve. No. All the wicked, he will not punish. No, he will destroy. Destroy means destroy. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, not kept somewhere. No. Read Psalms 37, 9 and 10, mother. <clears throat> 37, okay. <clears throat> For evil, evil doors shall be caught off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look 
carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. See, the evil doers shall be cut off. Not that they'll be tormented in hellfire. You see? No. See, they'll be cut off. <clears throat> Little while. The wicked shall be no more. Though you consider, search them, you can't find it. That's what the Bible says to you. Therefore, hell with hell. Hell means what? The Bible <clears throat> is a condition of the death. That is the grave. That's what the original meaning of hell in the Bible. Because Jesus clearly said, all that are in the graves. So all has to come back in the resurrection. Not that they will come back from the hell and be resurrected on this earth. We have studied systematically from beginning till now that there is going to be a resurrection for all the dead. So where are the dead? They are neither in hell or in heaven. They are all sleeping in the grave. They all come back when the Lord's second coming happens. And he shall come with a trumpet sound. Everybody shall hear the sound and everybody wake up from the grave and listen to God's words. Okay? Thank you. <clears throat> May Lord uh, bless his words. So, I will be sending uh, the YouTube link and the notes. Please go through it. Any doubts, any questions you have, you can ask.